The most exciting thing about being a travel journalist? Without a doubt, it's stumbling across those hidden gems. You know, the places that are off the beaten track. The walks that you only hear about through recommendations. The local characters. And spectacular views. Today I have the good fortune to be in Brighton, a place I've known for the last 40 years, which always strikes me as a kind of exotic, eccentric place, a bit like a wayward relative. Anyway, I'm very excited because I have a clutch of those hidden gems sent in by users of the Enjoy England website. Vivian Ellsworth recommends this walk to a monument dedicated to the memory of the Indian soldiers who fought alongside the British in the First World War. She says it's worthwhile not just for the impressive views, but also for the great sense of history. On the walk is Chattery Monument enthusiast Adrian Bristow. Adrian guides me on the short but brisk walk which takes us up into the South Downs. Well, this memorial was, uh, it was erected to commemorate the cremation site for Hindu and Sikh soldiers who died at Royal Pavilion Military Hospital in World War I. You probably know the Royal Pavilion in Brighton, and it was used as a military hospital. And um, as I understand it, the Hindu and Sikh soldiers who sadly passed away, um, they required a ritual cremation in accordance with their faith on an east-facing hillside. And is it, in a sense, a sacred place? I think it's very definitely a sacred place, yes. It's a significant contribution, I think, for the that India made to that whole conflict. Um, and quite an exceptional part that Brighton played in that story. Brighton began life as a fishing village and for my next hidden gem I've come here to the city's fishing quarter. This is Sandra Piper's favourite spot to bring her partner when he visits her from his home in Barbados. Lucky him. Apparently the local seafood here in Brighton is the best he's ever eaten anywhere in the world, including the Caribbean. So, what's the secret? Well, the man who knows is Neil Messenger, who's been a fisherman here for 25 years. So, what have you got that I could try that's been caught locally? It, now, this is... It tastes mm, nicer than it looks. This mm, is jelly deals. It, right, OK, I hope it does taste nicer than it looks. OK, and so you've jellied this eel specially yep. for me. The eel makes Great. its own jelly. Really? Yep. So that's very nice When you it. cook it, it makes its own jelly, the water turns to jelly. Yeah. There we go. OK, and I just eat the whole thing? Yep, just be careful, there's a little right. bone in the middle. Oh my goodness me, this is a first. You should have had a smaller piece, I think. Mm. Just mm. take the bone out. Mm. Yeah, that's it, that's all the bone there is. Very nice, fleshy, white mm. meat. Mm. Do you have to swallow that? Mm. <laughs> um, well, Certainly a local delicacy. Certainly, I imagine, very good for me. Yes. Mm. And in the summer, do a lot more crabs. Well, this next gem is well and truly hidden. I was told to go to the Brighton Pier and find arch number 260. Andrew Hunter contacted us to recommend what's claimed to be Britain's only sewer tour, saying it was a smelly but unique experience. Well, even though it's a working sewer, it's not too smelly at all, just a gentle waft of wastewater. Rob Smith not only works down the sewer, but is also one of the main guides for the tour. Why did the Victorians go to all this trouble? Well, before the sewers were put in, it was quite grim on the beaches. All the sewage from the town uh, then actually went straight into the sea. So the Victorians decided they built this large sewer system to take all the sewage off of the uh, city here and to dispose it through treatment works. 
The tours have been running here since the early 1960s. Rob is clearly proud of his job, which includes getting his hands dirty, quite literally. We have to actually get in that sewage. Um, we, we get a boat in here, we float through and uh, check the system out. Tour over. Now, where's the exit? I don't believe it. I've arrived in the middle of the city. That was fantastic. My very first subterranean sewage safari. My last hidden gem comes from Catherine Carter, who got in touch with us about her ideal English day. It involves taking a hike along the Brighton seashore, ending here at the dilapidated old West Pier to watch the sun go down. Catherine talks of the West Pier as a dying remnant of Brighton's glorious Edwardian past. I can certainly see this when you think that the pier has gone from being a thriving holiday destination through to lately being hit by storms and fire. It now stands as a monument to the great British seaside resort. And one other gem Catherine leaves us with is the flock of starlings that come to roost here every evening at dusk. Keep sending us your hidden gems by clicking on the Visitor Tips and Photo section of the Enjoy England website. And if you'd like to find out more about Brighton, try visitbrighton.com. <laughs>